Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this bracelet on two looms. I think this is absolutely fabulous. I just love how the appearance of the squares, it's almost just so nice and, I don't know, perfect I guess, in my eyes. I don't know, I just think it's really neat, the pattern, and um, this is also made in off, or the pin bars are offset still, so it's kind of neat that I was able to get the a nice square appearance still. So I think it's really fabulous. There is a one loom version available that I completed. Um, of course that one takes a little more time because it is um, it is a long bracelet to do. But I had to have that out as well so that anyone who wants to make it can do so. Um, this bracelet, I still don't have a name for it. I'm kind of filming all the tutorials at the same time for them so I haven't quite figured out the names for them. Hopefully it'll be something fabulous. I'm sure you could tell me if it's not. But uh, we'll get started, and this is the two loom version, and I have kind of set the pin bars up in an arrow shape. Now you still can do this bracelet if you have um, like the looms, like they can connect side by side, but they still have like just the pin bars are offset straight across. You can still make it, you'll just have to make like one less section. So it's just kind of adapting that to your loom to fit. Um, this one, we can get, I guess, 12 little squares or six, however you look at it, on one loom length when it's set up like this. Um, if you have the other looms, you can get five on at a time. As far as length, two looms fits me pretty perfect, I'd say. So. But that's how I have it set up. If you look here, there's three pin bars and then just two more kind of coming off at an angle. So we'll get started. And first we're going to do the, the perimeter out, the outside perimeter. And we're just going to take a band and go all the way up the left side and then all the way up the right side. And I discovered in my earlier tutorial that sometimes when I move the loom on this sheet here that it makes funny noises. It's not me. Just keep that in mind. So all the way up the left side and then do the same thing up the right side. I will also show you how to extend this, because I know a lot of people struggle to have even two looms, but having somebody to have four looms is even um, rarer, so I will definitely show how to extend this. So once you've gone on both sides, we're going to start making an arrow pattern coming into the center. So we'll start on one side. And on your first pin, you're just going to come towards the center with your bands. Like that. Then you're going to skip a row, and then on the next row, you'll do the same thing. Two bands towards the center. And then just repeat that all the way down this side of the loom. So skip a row, and then the next bands two in. Skip a row, skip, and like I said, if you have the offset pin bars, you'll only be able to get five, so you'll just like remove the extra bands that you didn't need. So but for us that can move the pin bars, um, we'll go do it on this last one too. Like so. Then we are going to come back to the beginning and do the same thing on the other side. 
So come in or start from the outside and work towards the middle. Just right across from the ones that we did on the other side. like so. So we have a nice arrow pattern and now we'll put a um, chain up the center. So starting in the middle we're just going to go all the way down to the end arrow. like that. And then you'll want an end cap here like three times like so. So now we have the the same white border laid out as in this one. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Not me. So now what we'll do is lay our filler colors, or the center of the squares, and I like to turn my loom to the side because we're going to be laying bands and working towards the center. So, got to get my right pattern here. From this pin, we'll go to this middle pin over here, and then back to the middle over here. Like that. Then we're just going to go straight across. And then we'll go from here to the center over here, and then back towards that center pin. like that. And that is the shape that we repeat in each one of these squares. So from this pin, you just kind of make it a curved line to this pin over here, straight across, and then curved to this pin. These are the sticky neon bands that Michael's put out for Rainbow Loom before Christmas. And I don't know if I've just had them so long that they're not sticky anymore, but they're actually alright to work with now, which is nice. mosquito bit me on my finger earlier, so it's really itchy. I'm trying not to itch it.
So like that. So we've got all the blocks on the the left side done. So now we need to do the same thing on the right side. So I just turn the loom to the other way and then work towards the center from this side. It's just the same repeating pattern in all the squares, so... Yeah, the mosquito bit my finger, and then he, I guess he got, well, he got my car somehow, and bit my finger, and then just, I didn't really notice it until after I saw it sitting on the steering wheel, just kind of looking at me. Like, I just bit you. Sorry. And then it's like, then I started feeling the itch. Yeah. They're coming. It's not my favorite part of the weather around here. That's my funny story for this tutorial. I don't know how funny it is. just my story, I guess. And again, it's late at night, so hopefully I'm not too loopy. And last square. So now we have every square filled, and now what we want to do is put end caps where the colors meet up in the middle from the squares. I'm going to turn it this way, it's a little easier. You want to wrap them like three times around, tight but not too tight. Like that. So you should be skip a pin, put one on, skip a pin, put one on. I know with all my colors here it might look a little confusing. Last one. So that's what we should have now. You have your squares filled, end caps where the colors meet up. So now we can start looming. Pretty quick, right? So first what we're going to do is start with the looming out the colors of the squares. So you're going to go in through that end cap we just placed on there, grab whatever band is on top, and pull it back towards itself. And then you might as well just go all the way around and bring your bands to this pin over here. So go in here, grab the middle square bands. We're just working on kind of this color, or the middle of the square layer, so nothing, don't grab any of the border bands underneath. So once you went up this side, you come back in the end cap, grab the next band, and bring that all the way over. And just keep doing that from the center cap until they're all out. So there's one side, then we'll do the other side.
like that. And then you just move on to the next end cap and do the other circles or other squares. And when you go through here, you're going to want to make sure that you go through this band that it's still overlapped, this pin. So you go in that top one we looped over and then grab the very bottom band and connect it. So this one does get trapped in this pin. And just keep moving on. Someone told me I should stop doing my thank yous to everybody at the end of my videos because they don't watch, people don't watch till the end, which could be true. If you kind of get the idea, then why would you need to watch till the end? But I guess I figured that maybe I'll start trying to throw my thank yous in the middle or somewhere when I'm just repetitively looming and you're watching. But I do appreciate everyone who's been making my designs and been super supportive and um, it definitely makes me want to create more so I just really I definitely thank everybody who's been helping me out last squares here. Like so. And I can tell it's the loom starting to buckle in a little bit, but um, we should be fine because all the rest of the bands are pretty loose. But that uh, could also just be because the bands that I chose, um, they're pretty tight in their stretch. So, And I don't remember it when I did these other bracelets where I used the jelly bands. So, Alright, so once we have that, then we'll come back to the beginning and we're going to loom up the center. So just the center um, single chain we laid. So in through the end cap and grab the top band and just loom that all the way up. Make sure you go through the end caps and then when you get to where we have the cross pieces that you just grab the chain and not the cross pieces. So they should still be down here. Like 
that. So now what we'll do is we'll come back to the beginning and we're going to loom out the cross pieces. So the first one will go through the end cap, grab the top band, pull it back towards itself all the way to the outside. And then do the same thing on the other side. And then for the next ones, um, we just use this kind of little center of the chain to loom through. Just pull your top band up and over, and then do the same thing over here. It seems like it'll be loose, but it actually seems to even out pretty well, as shown in these. So we'll just do that for the rest of the cross pieces. Actually pretty excited how this bracelet turned out because it's not super large amount of bands. It doesn't take too long. We're almost done with this whole length and it's we're a little over 20 minutes in according to my phone right now but once I edit it and if you took away all my blabbering I did in the beginning then you probably be 20 minutes in <laughs> or more. And then do the same thing with this last one. Like so. I will be honest, we will be taking these back off when we do the connection, but it's just easier to have it there than trying to mess with not trying to hold on to bands as much later on. So once you have all the cross pieces done, we're just going to come back and we're going to loom up each side of the loom. So just pick a side, make sure you go up through everything. I know there are a lot of bands on a few of these pins, but I haven't I, mean, I suppose it is a little tight, but it's not super bad. Like that. And then on the other side. like so. So that is everything loomed. There are two open points on here and if you're going to extend it with me you're going to want to secure them somehow. Um, either pull a band through and slip knot it or um, use a c-clip to hold the band. I think I'm just gonna put a couple of bobby pins up through one of them and then just keep my hook in the other one since I'll just transfer it right away. So I have that side secure. Um, these aren't a big deal. We can find the centers again pretty easily. This is easy to find. So now to take this off, I would recommend going and removing where all the bands are bunched up on the sides. So otherwise it gets kind of hard to remove from the loom and then you're pulling the border bands and there's a greater chance of them breaking, which would be no good. Just remember, be careful not to remove anything you don't want to. Okay. So now we can take this off, you can remove as many of these as you want, I just kind of keep going. 
So I can take this off. I'm just going to put my hook on the other side that's open. Pull up a little bit. Grab this other side. And you could put your hook through one side, pull it up a little bit, and then put your hook in the other side. Um, really doesn't matter, whatever's easiest for you. So that's what we have this time. Pretty neat. I guess they are still a little sticky, but I'll work them out. Alright, so now we have this, and of course if you want to just leave it this long and put on a couple of single chain rows and connect it around, you can certainly do that. Uh, but if you want to extend it, you do the, well you're going to want to figure out your colors. Um, for one thing, depending on how you did your design. Um, if you have the full looms and you're doing like a rainbow color, it's pretty easy to, you know, you just repeat the almost exact same pattern on each loom. Like here was one loom, and then here was the next one. So they were the exact same pattern. But when you do things like this, which is, um, well, that one's not good either. Because it was a repeating pattern on six or 12, so. When we do things like this one, which is just four colors, um, you want to make sure that they're going to line up correctly. So, I'll turn my loom around here to the correct way. So red arrow is by me, and I want to make sure that my design will repeat the correct way when it's attached. So it's just kind of You'll have to, like I did a little, wrote them down. That kind of helps sometimes. So it's whatever is easiest for you to do. I don't know why I took those ones off. Sorry. So same design, same layout, um, same end caps, except for we don't need one here because we're going to be um, placing this extension on there so that'll take the place of the end cap. Um, the only other thing that we want to do for the extending is we want to I'm telling you to take bands off now I just think it's easier than saying leave this band out when you loom. For our cross pieces we're just going to pop these off for a, a moment right here. And then we want to put our extension on. The, now this is the same design on both sides, so um, it shouldn't matter what side you put down, like so your pattern lines up correctly. So just get the corners on that have the open ends so we can kind of take care of those. So if you gooped up and reversed your pattern, you could still probably fix it by just flipping and you created the other direction. So get the other open end on here. And it's a stretch. Make sure you're hanging on over here. So, so I have both the ends on, and this one just wants to pop right on the middle where it goes, so just put that one on. So now, the next part is right here, where we have the, um, where the blocks connect together. We really only want the middle block bands to come over the top, because we're going to remove our cross section from before. So just get that there are two bands, it's actually one band looped over, but just get that over the pin. And do the same thing on the other side. Like that. So 
So now we're going to remove these cross section pieces from before. So over here you have a side border band on top. So if you just want to lift that up, then the next two bands should be your cross piece. So you can actually just pop them both off. And then before we put this back on, grab down here and grab your cross piece from that we took off earlier and put that on the pin. And then put the border band back on the side. And we'll look at that a little closer over there in a second. So now these two cross piece bands can come out. So we have that now. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So lift up the top band. Should be the side border band. You want to hold that. The next two bands should be the cross piece bands. Pop that off. And grab down there to that cross piece band that we dropped and bring it up over the pin and then put the side border band back on. And then remove those other two bands. So there's what we have now. So we'll look on the side here. What you should have on my next cross here. If you look up here we have the single chain that went up the side and then we have the, the cross piece band on top. That's what you should have down here now except for you'll have another band looped up over. So these bottom two will be one's the border band from bef that's from the bracelet you're attaching. The next one is the next single chain there. This Band, the third band up should be your cross band piece, and then this is the looped over top of the border bands. And it should look the same on the other side as well. And that's just so that there's no bands poking out or looking funny, you're not connecting correctly. So, But now, once you have all that, you need to loom up all these squares again. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to um, probably fast forward through that in the editing. It's the same exact process. Um, you're going to go in through the end caps, loom out all of the colors first. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we have all the centers of the squares loomed up. So we'll come back to the beginning and we'll loom up the center, which is kind of hard to grab because all this bunches up, makes it so it's hard to see. So let's go all the way up the center, top band only. Don't catch the cross pieces. All 
like so. Then we'll come back to the beginning, and this is where we do need to move a couple bands when we do this cross piece here. So you go in through this center pin here again, grab whatever band is on top, move it back towards itself, and go ahead and grab that next one, which will be the bottom band. But before you place it on this pin, you have to move the top band, which is the side border band, then put on the cross piece band, and then put the top band back on. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Top band off, then finish looming that cross piece, and then put that top band back on. So do the rest of the cross pieces, like before. Alright, so all the cross pieces are done, and now we'll just loom up both sides. Alright, so now again, you do have those two open points you'll need to secure. I'm just going to pull a band up through them and do a slip knot. Then to remove it again, you'll want to... There's a gnat. I don't know where they come from. Remove the bands from the sides. Now if you do that, make sure you have it secure. And you can go ahead and take it off the loom. All right, give it a little stretch. bands are still sticky. But there we have it. A lovely something bracelet that I will come up with a name for. I think these are pretty sweet. I just can't get over how nice and square they are because of the banding. I think they look fabulous. Pretty easy to make, not a whole lot of bands, but I think they're great. There is also another version of this that I have that's wide like this, and then I did make one with just the single row, so you can kind of see how to make that too. It is laid a little bit differently, so it looks a little better when you're finished. But that is my lovely tutorial for these. Um, like I said, in the middle of my video. <laughs> I definitely appreciate all the support I've gotten from everybody. Um, 
really does make me feel good um, to see all the designs out there that are um, that are made from my designs and that are inspired by my designs. I think that's fantastic. And of course, if you make my designs, I would love to see them. So you can show me on my Instagram, which is at Crafting Fantastic, which I know is totally confusing for my channel name, but I apologize for that. Um, I also have a Facebook page. Um, you can su subscribe to my channel, please, so that you can see when I come out with new things. Because it's always awesome, hopefully. But thank you guys very much for watching, and I will have more tutorials for you soon.